I swear, every time I see something like this, all I can think is, my name is Matt Foley and I live in a van down by the river. Hello and welcome everybody to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. We're here at my hometown store in Coldwater, Michigan. And this is my first hand, uh, first hand, first time ever getting my hands on a Jayco Swift little class B job right here. And I'm starting to see the attraction because the, the, the B van market has been slowly and steadily growing over the last several years. And, I, and I'm kind of getting the idea. It's, it's um, almost like the motorhome equivalent of a motorcycle, if you will. And what I mean by that is it gives you just that ultimate freedom. You can go where you want, when you want, how you want. You can, you know, if you need to overnight in the parking lot, you're good. If you have full hookups, great, you can do that too. It's an RV, it's like Burger King. You can camp your own way, if you will. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of analogies here. So what we're looking at on these, uh, I've heard a lot of people asking, you know, when are they going to start doing those Ram Pro Master chassis? And that's exactly what we're looking at here, that Ram Pro Master chassis, and it rides and handles so, so well. We're actually going to do a brief little test drive later in the video. I was very impressed with the ride and handling on this. But that's another thing. If you are terrified of those big, scary motorhomes, you don't want to tow a trailer, backing it up terrifies you. You're just driving a van, man, and maybe you want to drive it in a van down by the river. But my point is, you could park it by the river. You could park it in the park. You could park it behind the barn. You could mooch dock off the uh, the neighbors or whatever. You could do a little bit of whatever. <laughs> just make sure the neighbors know you're mooch docking before they get their electricity bill. You know what I mean? So this has factory standard solar to not only just extend your battery power with dual AGM batteries, but also um, it will help keep the chassis battery topped off so that if you haven't driven it in a while, you, you don't go to hit the key button. I almost said turn the key, but we don't do that anymore. And it's not dead. All that and so much more. I'm going to do my best to try to hit all the high points on this. But this is a fun thing. And I think the best way I can describe this is that driving is believing, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> and you know, when you see such a small rig like this, you don't really expect to have like a sort of ritzy, glitzy, grandeur kind of feel to it when you first hop inside. But I'll be darned if they don't have that kind of, I, that's how it strikes me. It's got a good look here. I do love the fact that it's all carpetless from the cockpit all the way to the back area right there. Um, we'll get to see those little mounts in action in a little bit because you might notice that table attached to the base of the little convertible sofa lounge, uh, whatever, what you call it, you want to call it over here. It's kind of interesting. The head section of these can actually prop up a little bit. So if you're kind of stuck inside on a rainy day or if you like to sleep with your head propped up a little bit, it's uh, pretty darn comfy. It's actually not too bad. And they're using a far better grade of uh, block foam in that uh, you know seating area right there. Now, this TV doesn't look like it's at the most conducive angle, but it can pivot around. One of my only complaints with the, the RV in general is that when you first kick on the power, the stereo just cranks it up to 11. And it scared the living crap out of me the first time it did it. And it's done it every time since, also scaring the crap out of me. Although, a little bit less because I was kind of used to it. Uh, the Dragonfly control panel over here is something you're finding in a lot of motorhomes and in some upscale towables. One of my favorite things about it is when it says light master off and on, it is not kidding. Any... Like, almost every single light, with the exception of individual little reading lights above the little sofa bed loungy things, they all kick on and off. You can open your power awning there, do anything you want on that thing. This is something else that kind of surprised me. The window coverage on this while you're driving is actually really nice. It is surprising how well you can see, like, what you would normally call blind spots and things like that. And, of course, you do have the uh, blackout roller shades kind of inset into those whenever possible so if you really want to blot out the sun here if it's a screaming hot day if you want to keep the nosy neighbors at bay that's something that you can easily do there one of the things that goes along with this because it's not a, a like a modified van chassis it's not a big like turtle top kind of thing it has a, about a six foot two interior um and just to kind of show you what that represents for somebody who's american size like me it means that my head is all up in that soft touch ceiling liner but this is actually a good way to talk about the soft touch ceiling liner in these Jayco Swifts. 
This is going to knock down us so much noise, not just at your destination, but the wind noise when you're whipping down the road. And we're actually going to take a little bit of a test drive later. And I think you're going to be very surprised with how little outside noise you'll hear in this thing. It's This is a very comfortable driving experience. The one thing though, if you're a little bit taller than me, like I'm kind of neck cranking down the whole time. Like I can stand in this big XL vent fan kind of skylight. If I start moving forward, I'll just clip my head on here. But I will just about cold cock myself on the air conditioner. That being said, though, we do have a full powered 13,500 BTU air in this. So um, even if you like this has a dark skin exterior, it has a light skin exterior. You get to choose. It's like charcoal and silver. I think they call them um, the darker skin. If it takes on more heat, this should be more than capable of offsetting that in this small of a space. So just giving you the, a view of the rest of the living area here. Let's go check out that rear bathroom. Then we'll we'll look at the entertainment in the kitchen and all the different things. Now, this has a sliding door, and I discovered just before I pulled out on my test drive, make sure you have this locked down so it's not just free sliding all over the place. It is a wet bath, and um, it is kind of funny if you think about it. You've got a bathroom that can be exposed to the neighborhood uh, if you're so inclined, because these are the rear van doors back here. Now, something that they have that I actually really like, they have these little magnetic blackouts. So during the day, if you're sitting here in living room time and you want the RV to look and feel as big as possible, you want maximum views, like maybe you, you park this thing in the middle of a field or something like that. You got it off the pavement a little bit. You can have effectively 360 degrees of viewing in here. Now, over on this side, this is a big hanging closet. Um, and then down here, there's some serious drawer space. We'll get a better look at those when we go um, outside. First of all, taking a look at the space that we have over here on our little toilet area. Actually wasn't terrible, though I, I had to make sure I wasn't bopping my head on the, uh, the medicine cabinet. Now that's a folding sink. And again, we'll get a little bit better look at that when we hop outside. But for the most part... Um, I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. Now, this is kind of a situation where you are probably sitting to bathe. Over here, by the way, you have your controls for your uh, your Truma water heater unit in there. Those are, again, the individual little reading lights. And one of the reasons I want to get down low over here is to show you that on both sides, there are some household outlets uh, available. Um, some USB plugs wouldn't be terrible in this area. But I don't know, that's me. By the way, that's the Truma Combi unit where it's like a water heater and furnace combo job. Um, very uh, efficient unit, by the way. So if I actually back up here into the bathroom just to give you a maximum look at everything because I don't like to use fisheye camera angles. Um, kind of putting the whole view of it all together. Obviously, when we get to our destination, you want to maximize your space so seats can pivot around. It took me longer than I'm proud to admit to figure out how to do that because they they blended it in so well these are actually the levers to tilt the seat back uh forward or back or to engage the spinnerator uh mechanism on that which is obviously a very very technical term um over here i was talking about the entertainment center and you know at a glance it doesn't look like it's the uh the most conducive thing but again that can pivot around you might actually see this a uh, little black, uh, I don't know, pull string, um, strap. Oh, there's the word. Ooh, wow, that hurt, guys. But I was talking about the uh, opposing viewing windows and, and breeze windows here. Again, going down the road, depending on where you're at, there's some beautiful areas in our country. And being able to soak that in while you're heading down the road, even as a passenger, would be really, really awesome. Um then again, you can pretty much block out everything, including the big windows and that sliding door right there. Now with that um, co-pilot seat spun around, you see that you do have yourself like a little dining or maybe mini desk workstation. There are some outlets there, but like every little nook and cranny they could, they put storage, they put drawers, they 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 have the countertop extension. They have all sorts of things built into this. Um, you got yourself a convection microwave and then the refrigerator is ACDC guys it is dynamite so it is um you know like electric 110 or 12 volt DC uh, uh that way you've got you know you always have uh you know 
cold capacity that when you're going down the road, if you're at a park, no matter what it is, and it will auto change over pretty much to whatever it needs to. It does have a freezer pocket put in there in case you want to bring your popsicles. There's also some interesting details like the sink cover that flips up. There's actually a padded little hold back on that so that it can stay up uh, and you know it doesn't fall on you, which is actually kind of handy if you do need to quickly rinse something going down the road. You don't got to worry about the sink cover flip flopping down and smack it onto you there. But these two little sleeper sofa bench lounge things, I've got them set up in like, one I've got kind of uh, uh, simulating both sleeper and sofa mode, and the other I have set up in like lounge mode over here. This can also become like a big dining area. And what's nice about this, even though the table's a little thin, I think two adults could most definitely fit very comfortably here. I think four adults could probably work to play some cards, although you are doing a little bit of a, a, a gut-sucking uh, butt scoop boogie to get yourself through there. Maybe a little less gut-sucking if you're a little more fit uh, around the midsection than I am. But hey, you know, that's, that's my life. That's what I got going on right here right now. Um, the other thing you might have noticed is all of the storage that's going on here below this sofa, as well as that Froley sleep system. If you're not familiar with what this is, basically, it's like kind of creating like a box spring effect. Instead of you feeling like you're just sleeping on a wooden plank, it'll actually give it a lot more give, and it helps keep a lot more air under there. It is just, it's something that a lot of people have said once they've put it in, it's a little bit to install like aftermarket, but once they've done, they're like, man, I'm so glad I've done this. I am so glad about it. Ooh, I just realized I'm sitting right next to the uh, to the cockpit area here. You know what that means, right? Horn check. It's uh, kind of, it's like, hey, Karen, how's your groceries? And another really cool safety feature I just discovered. If that seat is not faced forward and locked, you physically cannot shift this thing out of park. So they make sure that you can't go g hauling and, and, and throw your passenger all over the place. So I'm not, it's just those little things that you learn when you start messing with these that I like. All right, so we're gonna, we're going on a trip in our favorite Jayco Swift. The, uh, the Little Einstein theme song will forever be ingrained in my brain. But you know what, I thought I'd take this thing for a swing around the block. I wanted to see what all the buzz is about. And immediately, just pulling out of our driveway, one of the things that I'm noticing is just the responsiveness on this, uh, this V6. So many motorhomes, you know, even ones with these big engines, you get in them and they're just so darn large. You, you put your foot on the pedal and it's just really sluggish and really slow to respond. And I'm not saying this thing's like a sports car, but you pull out of our drive right there and you actually go right up a hill. And that's the smoothest, easiest transition I've ever had pulling out of there, towing a trailer or in a motorhome. So already I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I don't know what it's looking like on camera because I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road for obvious safety reasons, but the this road's not smooth. This road, this is Michigan potholes left, right, and center. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but uh, I know that around here the road is just, the, the winter time just beats the heck out of them. This is like the smoothest riding, handling thing. I've been in Senecas, I've been in diesel pushers. This is so smooth. The one thing I will say, and there might be a seat adjustment that I haven't played with yet, uh, because I think the person who drove this last was far smaller than me. Um, I feel like I'm sitting up so high, but uh, like almost a little, like I almost want to lower this down a little bit, but I got long legs and and uh, I, I don't want to like flash you my crotchular region while I'm driving here or anything like that. But I am like stretched out. I am comfortable. I feel like I have awesome views and visibility. The one thing that's kind of messing me up a little bit, but this is my own personal deficiency. I'm a rear view mirror fiend. Um, I'm always peeking up there. And in this one, you're looking at the stuff inside the RV. There's not a whole lot of peeking out of a rear view mirror that you can do in this. Um, you know, you gotta really just kind of adjust and, and learn to use your side mirrors. And that's something that I just apparently haven't done very well. Um, so that's more of a me thing than a this thing. But again, uh, the responsiveness, all right, there's no one coming. I'm gonna do a brake check here. Oh, okay. Brakes are good. She's gonna stop you. And this is what I've wondered. Like, I, every time I look at an RV, I ask myself, who is this for? Why would somebody buy this instead of that or Brand X? And the if, if you're going on a long trip and you're, you don't wanna have a big, bulky rig, if that's intimidating for you, if you're gonna navigate to a place that needs a smaller rig, 
I think that this would be an absolutely awesome traveler right here. If you're just going for a weekend or if you're going for like a big touring expedition, you know, uh, previous to this, the things on the Sprinter chassis were the ones I felt were the most comfortable, but even the turning radius on this right now, you're just, you're just driving a van, man, except it doesn't feel like a rattle trappy normal van like you normally get out there, you know? And again, I can't say it enough. I think the best part about these, all the fun features and all that stuff inside, the fact that getting there is just as fun, I think, as being there in a coach like this. Um, like, this is a road trip, baby, you know? The moment you get in, like, you have access to full facilities. You've got all kinds of stuff inside that you can, uh, you know, like, you can hop back to that fridge, because obviously the fridge being D uh, ACDC, um, you know, it does the dirty deeds and it does them dirt cheap, but my point is, it, uh, you know, it's always running for you, and it's always travel safe. This is just such a fun, turn the key and go, like, whether you have a big touring trip planned, or you're like, okay, let's just uh, let's just get out of here uh, for the weekend, like a, a spontaneous spur of the moment trip. I can see this being fun. This would, I think, be a really fun rig. Um, I've always kind of wanted to do this, and I never exactly had the guts to do it. Where wife and I, and obviously the kid, we would just pack up for the week, and then we would head out, and we just kind of get lost for the first couple days, and then we just start GPSing our way back. Have no destination, have no plan. I would love to try doing that in something like this. Maybe one of these times I'll uh, I'll, I'll take one of these little swifts out for a demo. Um, although my, I think my wife generally prefers a more traditional sleeping arrangement, but maybe I'll be able to do that like alone sometime. I don't know. So now that we've kind of just taken a pass around and seen her closed up, I thought I'd uh, you know open everything up and see it in more detail. Now we're on the Ram uh, ProMaster chassis. I think I've mentioned that about a bajillion times right now. It's a 3.6 liter V6, and it, I'm telling you, I'm very impressed with the uh, responsiveness, responsivity, whatever whatever word is appropriate there. It moves. When I tell it to go, it goes. So like you know, if you need to put the hammer down and you got to merge into traffic, you got to stomp your foot down like cold trickle. You know, uh, you can make that happen. Nice little Days of Thunder reference for you this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Cold Trickle, by the way, my favorite NASCAR driver in history. Uh, very close second, though, would be probably Ricky Bobby. That being said, I'm obviously uh, not an avid NASCAR watcher, nor am I making fun of NASCAR. I just don't know much about it. I'm not a sporter for the most part. Anyway, I love that big sliding screen door over the, uh, well, I guess it's a patio door when you reach your destination. And obviously, I've got that power tool awning extended right now. I've got it in the furthest down max shade position. Uh, you can lift that up for a little more clearance as well. But look at this here. You can actually like see the Helwig helper spring back here. Um, what that's doing for us is, you know, it, it, especially if you start putting cargo in this thing, it will soak up a lot of that heavy duty bounce on the back end. Because if the back end starts bouncing, uh, you know, <laughs> if your RV is twerking, basically, uh, then you're going to be working up in the cockpit area. And it's going to take a lot of that twerking and working out of the equation. That is another thing I didn't expect to say when I was making an, uh, a motorhome video today. Now, as promised, I said we we're going to get a couple better looks at things actually in the bathroom from the outside. And I tell you, <laughs> this is the ultimate Fajita Friday Taco Tuesday bathroom. If you truly need to air out the space, I don't know if there's a better one capable of doing it. But uh, again, we have that folding sink over here that can you know, drop down when you need it. And some people might not use it, some people might not care for it, but some people really like the fact that you don't have to wash your bathroom hands uh, you know, in the kitchen sink where your food's being prepped. And that's your shower curtain in that bag up there nicely contained out of the way. Now around the corner here, this would be our, our biggest closet space, which is interesting that it's in the bathroom, but it works. Closet and dresser space back here, effectively next to the, uh, the bedroom areas, it works very, very well. And down here you have a handy little utility wet bay for the outside. You see where that little garden hose sprayer that hooks into that um, upper right hand corner attachment right there uh, where that's available. On the back we got ourselves a 3,500 pound chassis, or uh, uh, hitch, rather chassis, no, 3,500 pound hitch. And you know the idea here is like if you've got something small you want to pull behind it or or some heavier accessories like bike racks or something that's what this is for this is not you know it's a small rig it's not made for big time towing and we man 
You know, that's on an angle. That is exactly 50-50 split in the difference between a propane cooker hooker and a propanus where the gas comes out the back side. You can see how all of our um, gate valves and everything, our, our sewer hookup, it's all in the one centralized corner. And there you see the generator exhaust. These have a 2800 Onan generator so that, uh, you know, you've got a 1000 watt inverter. You've got the 190 watt solar package and that's good for some very light duty quick 12 volt kind of stuff maybe running a fan or something like that off your battery power and this by the way has dual 12 volt agm batteries but that generator will give you full function even the air conditioner no matter where you're parking no matter what you're doing that's one of the nice things about having that built right in so um you know it doesn't maybe necessarily have the biggest baddest solar package or anything like that but it has all the features and qualities you're going to need to, you know, do whatever you want, where you want, how you want. Um, and now looking up top here, that's where we will see that 190 watt Go Power solar package, um, as well as the Thule uh, roof rack system up there. And one of the things that you can attach to that is the included uh, telescopic ladder. So if you need to get up there to get to your cargo, to get to your stuff, you don't have to get a separate step ladder. It actually just stores under one of those beds, if you recall, where we saw them before. So again, by your request, I'm doing my best to try to get more motorized inventory out here on this channel. Um, motorhome chassis have been in shorter supply, so while the towable market is largely replenished, we are still seeing a huge deficit in available motorized inventory. But as I have it, I'll do my best to catch it. And if you want to see more like this, showing you the good with the bad, helping you make sure yeah, before you spend all that money, we make sure we find you your second rig the first time around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know how we did today. Let me know um, if, I, if I've missed anything major that you know about these or um, you know if there's something else you'd like me to focus on that maybe I could do a little bit better job. I want to do the best I can for you. And when you're ready, remember that we're ready here at Bishop's RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Clamping? What do we call this? Vampin'. Van camping. <laughs>